Hello, David Harper, a Bionic Turtle, and a brief tutorial on the piecewise cubic spline or cubic polynomial. And this is an, a popular approach to fitting a function to the treasury yield curve. It builds on what I did yesterday, which was to show or demonstrate a cubic polynomial. That's a function right here where we solved for four parameters to produce a function that's plotted here by the green line, notice how smooth and continuous it is, that was a best fit to actual yields, which I pulled that are only two or three, three days old from the US Treasury, and those actual yields are plotted in red. And so our function, our cubic polynomial, did a pretty good job of mapping to the actual yields. The problem is, it's not going to be able to do the job over the whole maturity spectrum from short-term treasury bills out to 30-year treasury bonds. And so we can apply the piecewise cubic spline or polynomial approach. And to illustrate that, I'll take a look at the diagram I have here. And on the x-axis, we've got the full maturity going from 0 to 30-year maturity. And first, we've got a green segment here. And let's just say we decide, I'm following Bruce Tuckman's example here, we decide to break the maturity term structure into three pieces. So this first one ends at 10 years. And we use that cubic polynomial, same as we did before. So you can see we still have four parameters. R sub 0 is going to be really the y-intercept. So that's going to be the short-term interest rate. And then we solve for a, b, and c. And that gives us a function that, if we decide, would fit to the short-term maturities, or maturities up to 10 years. Then, at a not point, we start a new cubic polynomial. So that's the basic idea. And then we've got a third cubic polynomial running from 20-year maturity to 30-year maturity. So what we have is we've broken the entire term structure into three pieces, and we are joining them at these knot points. These knot points are what make the piecewise cubic polynomial a spline, and they guarantee continuity as we go from one function to the next. Notice on the second function, the parameters are different, but we're still going to guarantee when we solve for the function that the first rate on this curve, that's the 10-year rate, it matches the 10-year rate that applies on the first function. So we're going to guarantee that they meet at the knot point, but then we are going to have different parameters. So this, this allows us to describe all sorts of different curves and be much more accurate. So again, we're going to solve for four different parameters, really three different parameters. We don't need to solve for the R sub 10. And then at the third segment, three different parameters was another cubic polynomial. So you can see we've just taken this cubic polynomial approach and applied it to a number of segments in order to more flexibly describe the term structure. So now, if I go back to my plots, now on my chart, I've extended out to 30 years. And in red dots, I've still got my actual yields. And so I, I have necessarily lots of gaps. And then the blue line is my function, and I want to fit it to these actual yields as best I can. It's much like we did before with the straightforward cubic polynomial. This time, though, we have 10 parameters to solve for. So those all are shown here in the green block. I still have an R sub 0 or an R. That's, the again, the intercept. That's going to be the rate at time 0. But then I'm going to decide that I want to break it into three segments. So I have an A, B, and C. That's right here, running from 0 to 10 maturity. And then the second function, the second cubic polynomial, is going to take over at 10 to 20, so I need new parameters there. And 20 to 30, I need new parameters there. So we are using this cubic polynomial function three times. So the only difference here is if I go down in terms of the actual calculations, my first row is still the time dimension. That's time to maturity. My second column is the actual treasury yields. And then my third column 
is the cubic polynomial function. So if we take a look at that function at the one year mark, we can see again it's rate plus a times time plus b times time squared plus c times time cubed. The only difference is if I go down here to the 11 year mark, I'm actually going to start my second cubic polynomial function. And so my instead of an r sub 0, I'm actually going to use the rate that applied that we already solved for at the 10 year mark. And then I have new parameters. Instead of a1, I have a2. And I'm still going to multiply by time, although this time I'm going to subtract 10 because we're starting over. So at 11, this is the time dimension becomes 1. And then I've got a b2 parameter and a c2 parameter. And those are multiplied by time squared and time cubed. So this is just another cubic polynomial. It's just been rescaled. And if we go down to the 20 year mark, I'm going to have another, the, fin the third and final cubic polynomial function. So right now, if we look at the plot, because I've entered in essentially zeros for all the parameters, my three cubic polynomials combine, they are stitched together to produce a simple flat line. But what I want to do, as before, is use Excel Solver to set the target cell, which is right here. And that target cell is simply, I'll move this solver over a bit, it's the sum of all the squared residuals. So wherever we had an actual yield, we subtract that from the r yield that is produced by the cubic polynomial function. So that's going to give us a difference between these two. And we're going to square it. And then we're going to sum all of those squared errors. And so that's a way for us to give a single number. It's a pretty nifty trick, really. Give us a single number right here where the goal is we can minimize it. And we minimize it by changing all of our parameters. And then we just ask Solver to do that for us. It takes about a second. I'm going to accept the solution. And you can see now in my zeros have been replaced by parameters that Solver gave to me. I'll take this out just a little bit. And we can look over here at the plot. Again, those reds, red dots are actuals. And now the blue is my piecewise cubic spline. And you can see we did a pretty good job. The curve is a little bit funky. But you can see the basic idea is we've got a single function. We've got a function with its own parameters operating from 0 to 10. We've got one from 10 to 20 right here. And then we've got a new cubic polynomial running from 20 to 30. But again, you can't tell where they start and stop each of those segments because we guaranteed continuity at the not point. So that's the piecewise cubic spline. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.